Coming up, the next wave in Wi-Fi monetization. What exactly is that? We'll get the answer from one of the smartest people in this business, and that's Eng Kwong Tap of a company called Ant Lab. So join us for that in just a moment. All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Klaus Hetting and I'm the host of Wi-Fi Now TV. And this of course is the interview program that brings you all the great stories and all the great people from across the Wi-Fi industry. And I've been away for a while, but of course I'm delighted to be back in the studio and interviewing another prominent guest from the world of Wi-Fi. So today we've got a really good one for you and we've got a lot of ground to cover because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects and that's monetizing Wi-Fi. And my guest today, In Kwang Tat, really knows something about this. He's the VP of Customer Solutions at Ant Labs. It's a Singapore-based company. Uh, which is right now delivering some of the most progressive work on Wi-Fi uh, monetization that I've seen uh, in recent times. So we'll get to Mr. Angkor Tap in just a moment. Before that, just a quick announcement. Uh, as you should know by now, if you've been uh, following Wi-Fi Now generally and myself, Wi-Fi Now is without a doubt uh, the premier Wi-Fi conference and expo. And uh, even better news than that is that we're going to be taking Wi-Fi Now, the event to beautiful San Francisco this May 15th to 17th. So anyone working seriously with Wi-Fi should immediately make plans to join us. So make sure you mark your calendars for May 15th to 17th. The location is San Francisco, Redwood City to be specific. Go to our website at wi nowevents.com slash USA for more information and registration. And if you're interested in a role at the event, you can drop me a line at klaus at wi nowevents.com. We still have some room left for exhibitors, also a few speaking slots left. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with us really, really quickly because we're filling up. So that was my announcement for today. And now on to my guest. His name is Eng Kwang Tat, and he is the VP of Customer Solutions at Singapore-based company called Ant Labs. Eng Kwong, welcome to the program and great to see you again, sir. Uh, nice to see you too. And Eng Kwong, last, one, last time we met, it was in Bangkok and you did a wonderful presentation. Uh, Thank you. The superheroes of Wi-Fi. I thought that was fantastic, both in terms of presentation and, and content, because you guys are doing some great work in, in, uh, in Wi-Fi monetization and so on, service management and all that. Just for mm -hmm. those... Uh, our viewers who don't know Ant Labs, give us the one minute intro to Ant Labs and your role at Ant Labs. Okay. Um, thanks again for having us uh, on your program. So, Ant Labs, uh, as you can see, A N T L A B S, uh, we're a company, uh, we're a technology company, and we're headquartered in Singapore. And we also have branch offices in Malaysia, South Korea, uh, Dubai. Um, and we are a technology pioneer in the area of uh, guest access and uh, wireless solutions since uh, 1999. So actually we are more than 18 years old. Um, and uh, today we are actually the market leader in Southeast Asia and uh, the Middle East in providing um, connectivity solutions for three main areas. One is hospitality. Um, also large venue um, guest access, as well as carrier Wi-Fi solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so um, today, as you mentioned, we are uh, actually focusing on Wi-Fi monetization. And, um, you know, we do have a global network of resellers and, and therefore customers in many countries. Um, and we actually engage directly with the carriers and the telcos. So we do have an intimate knowledge of, you know, where they see Wi-Fi and uh, particular uh, topics like carrier Wi-Fi, mobile offload, Wi-Fi calling, and the Wi-Fi monetization is definitely something on their agenda. They are very keen to see how they can uh, maximize and, you know, have alternate revenue streams from their Wi-Fi infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I'm going, let's talk a little bit about uh, innovation in in with reference to monetization because 
Yeah. We all know that monetization has been a big issue for a long time. And, and we know that, you know, sh shall we say that there are certain ways of monetizing Wi-Fi that are fairly well known and that are still growing okay. presumably, which include offload and loyalty and, and, and so on and so forth. But what I'm particularly interested in bundling and, and so on, and you covered this really well, by the way, at our Asia event. But what Thank I'm really you. interested in from you guys is to hear more about what you're doing in specific areas that are uh, really changing the way that service providers are approaching the whole monetization question. So in terms of okay. content, in terms of engagement, I know you guys work a lot on solutions like that. Can you tell us something about that? Okay, so um, you're correct. Like uh, for the, you know, for the last three to five years, in terms of Wi-Fi monetization, a lot of emphasis has been on the Wi-Fi offload aspect and uh, more recently, uh, social Wi-Fi as a means to leverage on the Wi-Fi infrastructure to engage customers uh, more directly, uh, have more insights into what the customer is doing on the network, and ultimately trying to find uh, the business intelligence in order to market new products and services, or even just to understand the customers better. And um, in this particular area, you know, we have been uh, helping customers uh, set up their carrier Wi-Fi infrastructure, helping them with mobile offload projects. And uh, to me, that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Of course, just Wi-Fi offload or mobile offload alone, there is a certain ROI. But for me, I think the more interesting thing is when we have a closer customer engagement and uh, how we do that is um, in a few key areas. So um, at the very basic minimum, uh, we are ensuring that whatever Wi-Fi infrastructure a carrier or a service provider in a large venue like a convention center or an airport um, or a citywide Wi-Fi project, um, they can allow their customers to connect seamlessly, securely, and um, that is the first criteria for the critical success. So I, I think in Bangkok, we talked about, you know, how when you have a single success or using some form of IPSIM kind of authentication, you lose the interaction with the customers um, of the traditional force portal uh, UAM, uh, which is the unified access method kind of login. But, you know, we shared in Bangkok that, you know, we actually are able to help some customers to allow their customers to connect seamlessly, but yet after that, we still do some um, intelligent networking so that you still have the false portal, you still have the engagement, and you still have the exposure and pre uh, presence uh, for the customers to see the marketing message or for whatever reason. It's a super important point because not yeah. everybody wants the seamlessness. I mean, I know some carriers want that. They want people wow. to switch over to Wi-Fi securely and simply use it and and there's no uh, interruption, so to speak. But mm -hmm. other, other service providers, like for managed services and so on, would want that, but they also want the piece that means that they can engage with the consumer, right? So, so that they yeah. can present the consumer with data or apps or anything, things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, in, I mean, it's a very small, simple problem, but you know, we have an elegant solution. So the catch 2020, the catch 22, sorry, is that if you have false portal or UAM login, um, it is not easy for some customers to get on to it. Um, so we have the customers who switch from Force Portal to uh, Ipsim or some, some form of seamless uh, connection. And they had a 600% increase in the number of customers joining the Wi-Fi network. Okay. So it was a six times uh, and they had to, in a way, before we came in with the solution, they had to give up the Force Portal the uh, potential marketing presence and the messages that they uh, can send to their customers. So, so I'm going to tell um, us a little bit about, yes. okay, sorry to interrupt. I, I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you, maybe going through uh, a couple of the things that I remember you showed us in Bangkok and, and you showed us some, some super progressive ways of engaging with uh, mm -hmm. the user. Uh, through, for example, through injection, through, uh, and, and you can actually also run apps through the injection mechanism. Can you take yes. us through a bit of that? Because I actually thought that piece I actually hadn't seen before. I thought that was really cool. Sure. Um, you know, thanks for interrupting. I was going to get to that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, 
after that, um, the next thing that, you know, as we discussed is that, um, so you have uh, information about the user login, right? And I think this is where, this is something unique uh, in terms of NLAP solution that we bring to the table because in the background, we can actually unify islands of data uh, and link it to the user's identity. And one side effect, and uh, it also comes in into the uh, media, uh, what we call the media injection or the uh, application injection that I mentioned is that when uh, we do the false portal, okay, um, that's one thing. The second thing is in some of the customer's network, we can actually inject HTML kind of code on top of the uh, web browser uh, data stream. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a transparent and almost unobtrusive uh, presence on the user's browser's desktop. I mean, uh, screen top or desktop, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this uh, HTML code could be showing an image, it could be showing a video, uh, but it could be any web technology. Mm -hmm. So it could be, um, as I shared in Bangkok, one of the things that we've done is actually a um, calling application, uh, which the user doesn't download or install on his phone, but you know it floats on top of his browser session. So um, there are potential applications that you know in in a hotel example or in in a big shopping mall, you could reach front desk or the concierge. Right. You could reach an emergency, or you know you would just call for. You know, how can I get from Starbucks to um, Uniqlo or Under Armour shop, right? Right. So this is really changing the way that Wi-Fi services are being used and, and turning Wi-Fi into a media channel and also into a new form of new services channel, the way that you're doing this, right? Yes. And, um, and like when we started the company, we were talking about connectivity. We were talking about service discovery, application discovery. And uh, it was quite interesting because now we begin to see it. So the user didn't download or install any application, but the application was made available for the user. And we had unified the user's identity to give him the instant access to the network as the identified user. So you could have various classes of users who may have uh, access to different types of applications or services and tailored content. And I think the tailored content is something exciting for the advertisers, yeah. which in yeah. turn would you know, increase your Wi-Fi monetization potential. I think it's exciting what you guys are doing. So in general, when you look at the markets in various parts of the world, sometimes I, I tend to think that maybe I haven't been to Asia that much, I have to admit, but I know oh, that you should come. I should come to Asia more. It's far away from me, my friend, but I do want to come to Asia more because there's a lot of exciting stuff going on technically. Uh, and, and I think the service providers use Wi-Fi in perhaps in more creative ways. And there's uh, sort of a, they're embracing Wi-Fi perhaps more. I, I, do you think that's, that's correctly understood or what's your opinion on that? Well, um, in our experience, when we talk to customers in different countries, and by customers, I mean the large uh, property groups or the property developers, as well as the telcos and carriers, well, most of the time, these customers have their own specific needs and requirements, okay? The underlying uh, need to have ROI to maximize revenue, of course, is always there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, uh, for example, uh, but... So we can have very, very interesting requirements and somehow depending on the local conditions, we can actually provide very unique solutions. So let me give you an example. The uh, media injection that I mentioned earlier, we actually rolled it out in a large resort in Dubai. Okay. okay. Yeah. And for them, um, they didn't know that such technology is possible and they just wanted it for um, engaging general users. Okay, so to say, uh, what is the deal of the day? What's the promotion? What can they do? But the next step that we're going in with them is to allow their um, loyal customers to be able to be identified and have tailored information delivered to them, which is relevant to them. Mm -hmm. And I think they are excited about their potential and we're doing that probably sometime this quarter or next. 
Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I can share more insights uh, um, with you. Well, we, um, right, we definitely want to bring you back as well for more details because I, I think what yes. you're exciting, and as I, as I said, I think probably several times already, I, it's it's rare that I see these kinds of applications. And you might, to my knowledge, oh, really? one that does, uh, you know, in in this sophisticated way, combine these various ways of using Wi-Fi as media and for offload. Okay. But let me just ask you maybe uh, one of the last questions, perhaps, or perhaps sure. the last question. So when are you guys going to conquer the rest of the world? Because you, I know you're doing really well in Asia. Do you, you want to come over? And Middle East, yeah. The Middle East, yes. Yeah. Uh, how's, how's, the, how's the sort of in the Western direction? Are you gonna, guys going to come over at some point? Um, yeah, but uh, you know, we have a lot of interest in the Middle East and Asia right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are looking for partners who can help us to, um, you know, bridge to the other side of the other continents. Um, and uh, we do go to Europe. We do um, attend uh, events and conferences in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint, right? So, uh, <laughs> so actually, next week um, yeah. I will be in Washington, uh, where um, there is a, a government agency-led smart city public Wi-Fi uh, conference seminar. Um, that was initiated by the U.S. government's uh, National Institute of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. And we were invited by our um, Infocom Media Development Authority to join because we are a pioneer in Singapore for the wireless at SG public Wi-Fi and uh, uh, Wi-Fi roaming. So, um, yeah, so we, we can't wait to find the right partnership to bring us to Europe and U.S. because... Um, we do engage some of the carrier customers directly. So, uh, you know, it's not possible to go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, I just want to share something which I think you probably, you know, be very, very um, excited about. Um, okay, so this is another case study. And uh, we've done it with one of the Singapore uh, shopping malls. Uh, it's actually a, a property group. And what we've done is we've gone one step further. Um, so we are doing a seamless login at the mall and we are able to link up uh, with no invasion of privacy the users uh, who seamlessly log on what is their identity linked to the shopping loyalty program of the shopping mall All right. as well as the point of sale system so the shopping mall actually knows this particular device is most likely belonging to which user and what they have been buying, where they have been walking along the, in the mall. And um, it is a much, much better um, analysis of the heat maps and all that because you know actually who is walking from point A to point B. And um, they're actually using this information to go beyond just advertising. They're looking at how they can optimize the traffic flow, maybe a specific area they're going to convert into a nursery. And they are trying to, um, you know, fine tune the tenant mix as well. So they are finding exciting new ways beyond just simple advertising. This is absolutely, and, uh, and this is absolutely the, I believe, the future of how Wi Fi. And associated technology is going to be used in in a retail setting, in a mall setting, or for entertainment. Yeah, they need it. They need it because, like, uh, I'm buying so much things on Amazon and eBay. Yeah. I'm just wondering how they're going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, that's and the thing. Could be that, are, that that will make them competitive, and 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 it's and it's exciting to be part of. This is in Singapore, is it? Yes, it is. So come by. I'll show you. I need to see that. I'm going. It's great to have yeah. you in the show. And I should say. Thank you. Lot. <laughs> I should say just to, to all our viewers out there, if you're in the Wi-Fi space and you're looking for a fantastic company to represent, here you have it. Um, uh, yeah, this guy here. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I like the zooming function. That's a very good. I don't think we've had that on the show before. That's oh, cool. I have a pretty assistant doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. And Kong, thank you so much for coming. And I hope to see you again Thanks, soon Ralph. here or in Asia, wherever you might be. It was really a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's show. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, of course, for, uh, to Ang Kwang for joining us. And don't forget to go to our website, wi fi for all the latest and greatest information on all things Wi-Fi. And remember to subscribe also to our Wi-Fi uh, new service, which we've been working very hard on. It's a really good one. So see you next time, everybody, and have a great week.